Welcome to the video. Don't forget to hit that bell icon for weekly videos on historical figures and stories. If you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. Warriors were once an integral part of society. The best of them were highly looked up to and feared, as these men couldn't be killed easily and would be legends on the battlefield. But what if there was a state that could transcend the skill and might of the best warriors? A state that could ignite supernatural aggression, strength, stamina, and according to legend, would allow you to fight on with fatal wounds. Well, that was known as the state of the Berserker, or Berserk Gang. There are a variety of theories of how a man would induce the state of Berserker on himself. One such premise is that the Berserkers were warrior shamans, the Berserkers would dress in the hide of a bear during battle, and would connect with the soul of the animal they were wearing, by summoning the spirit, and then accepting it into himself. That way, the spirit gave them their strength and ferocity. The wearer of the bear hide would go beyond the confines of humanity, and be able to fight in a trance-like fury. In the Germanic shaman military, Men would go through a process before being admitted into the group. They would go into the wilderness and live like their totem animal, which in this case is a bear, and they would get their food from hunting, gathering, and raiding in order to bond with the savage world, abandoning their humanity. The shaman would no longer be an ordinary human, but a bear man. The Vikings weren't the only people that would enter the state of the Berserker, but they would become famous for it, as it is spoken of in many sagas, and is even mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. The techniques behind the summoning of the spirit animal, and the rituals, have been lost to time, and we no longer know how to reach this trance-like state. However, Saxo Grammaticus, leaves us a clue to one ritual in the Gesta Denorum which states, Bring your throat to its streaming blood, and devour the feast of its body with ravenous jaws. Then, new force will enter your frame, an unlocked vigour will come to your muscles, accumulation of solid strength will soak through every fibre. So one part of the ritual may have been drinking the blood of a slain bear, and then feasting on its flesh. The warrior shamans would no doubt pass their knowledge down, but in the year 1015, Jarl Erik Hakonson outlawed berserkers. This was mainly due to the reason that berserkers would make their living by challenging men to a duel, killing them, and then taking their possessions and women. A normal person, who couldn't tap into the spirit of a bear, would have no chance against a berserker, and this was well known around Scandinavia at the time. In addition, by this time, the Christianization of the Viking world had begun, with many followers of Odin turning to Christ. With the state of the Berserker being associated with spellcasting and summoning, it was classed as a heathen magical practice, so the practices of the shamanic warriors would slowly disappear, but some would carry on in secret even after Jarl Eric's law had been passed. With the berserkers and other warrior shamans being devoted to Odin, it's no wonder the practice was banned. In 1066, 40 years after the decree to ban all berserkers, Harald Hardrada, the King of Norway and his army, arrived in England and began invading it. Harald Godwinson, the King of England, would ambush Hardrada's Viking army, and would begin slaughtering them. As the Vikings were running, one lone axeman allowed his army to regroup and form a shield wall as he stood guard on the bridge and took on the whole English army. The Anglo-Saxon chronicle states that he slew up to 40 Englishmen alone, taking many wounds but never falling. That's until a soldier sailed under him from the river and speared him in the groin while he was still fighting. This allowed the Saxons to finish off the Viking Axeman. This act of heroism has gone down in legend, 
but how did one man have the strength, stamina and resilience to kill that many people and carry on fighting with fatal wounds? One explanation is that he was in the state of the berserker, embodying the spirit of a bear, taking on its strength and savagery, only dying due to the human body being pushed past its physical limits in terms of blood loss and fatigue. This is also reflected in texts, which show berserkers inherited physical immunity during battle. Many tales say how, no weapon would bite them, and how they were harmed by neither fire nor iron. The explanation behind the concept of immunity is that while in the berserker state, the shaman warrior may receive wounds, but due to the savage nature of their embodying spirit, they would take no note of their injuries until they had passed from the berserker state. Hence the term, going berserk, which comes from the old Norse word berserker. Harold Hardrada was a Christian and had fought all over the world and had seen more than most. So if this unnamed Axeman was a berserker, it conveys how highly regarded berserkers were in battle, as the law and religious codes clearly stated that shamanic magic was outlawed. But Hardrada took the berserkers anyway, knowing they would shine in battle. In fact, Hardrada may have been a berserker as he joined the Varangian Guard, a group of elite Viking soldiers who served the Byzantine emperors as personal bodyguards. In Emperor Constantine VII's book, called the Book of Ceremonies, he refers to a gothic dance performed by members of the Varangian Guard, who would wear animal skins and masks. This may have been connected with the berserker rituals, which Harold may have taken part in. This in turn, makes it believable that he took berserker warriors to help him fight the English in 1066. A figure from Sweden was found, which depicts a man dancing with a bear-like figure. Could this give us more hints into the state of the berserker? Many historians believe that the berserker rage could have been induced by the consumption of a hallucinogenic mushroom called the Aminata muscaria. Others believe that they may have consumed large amounts of alcohol, or a combination of the two. Another theory has been proposed, as seeds belonging to the henbane plant were found in a viking grave. The effects of the plant if ingested by humans are hallucinations and restlessness. The effects are said to last for three or four hours, and the after effects may last up to three days. This could make sense as the fit of madness called the berserker state has been described in the sagas. It is said, it begun with shivering, chattering of the teeth, and a chill in the body. Then the face would swell up and change colour. With this came great hot-headedness, which at last gave over into great rage, under which they howled as wild animals, bit the edge of their shields, and cut down everything they met, without discriminating between friend or foe. When this condition ceased, a great dulling of the mind and feebleness followed, which could last for one or several days. These effects sound very similar to that of a high, and then a come down once the effect of the henbane or henbane combination with mushrooms had subsided. The substance theory is also credible, as shamans believe that in order to reach different spiritual planes, a shaman needs to enter the state of a trance, which can be done by ingesting hallucinogenic plants, with magic mushrooms even being referred to as the flesh of the gods in Aztec society, which in turn also had their own shaman warriors. They would wear the pelts of jaguars and embody their spirits just as the Vikings did with bears and wolves. To conclude, in order to reach the state of the berserker, I believe a combination of mind-altering substances such as magic mushrooms or henbane, along with the shamanic practices which also consisted of summoning the spirit animal, were needed to go berserk. As to reach the plane needed to connect with the animal, 
you would have to transcend the reality of this world, limited by your senses, and connect with a different plane. Then the rituals such as the drinking of the bear blood, the wearing of the animal pelts and dancing would take place, and finally, you would reach the legendary state of the Berserker. That's my idea based on my research anyway. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. How does one reach this state? Is it shamanic practices, or using mind-altering substances, or both? Also, do you believe the Christian king Harald Hardrada still practiced the banned tradition of going berserk? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.